Welcome everyone to the first in our series. Uh, we are going to be documenting for the next few weeks uh, a treatment I'll be performing on my very able assistant here, Nurse Emily. Uh, what we're looking to do is uh, we're introducing a new skin treatment program. It's using a product that we've been using for a little while in the form of Tioxane Redensity 1. But the difference is we're really trying to get this going now ahead of the change in season, winter, or everything that's not very good for our skin, where we look a little bit grey, a little bit lacklustre, possibly a little bit drying as uh, air conditioning kicks in and, and etc. So using Redensity 1, the idea is the combination of hyaluronic acid, uh, amino acids, antioxidants, vitamins and minerals will help with hydration of the skin to help the skin look a little plumper, but also with that other concoction of patented materials, what you'll also receive then is a cellular redensification, improving collagen production, elastin quality, to give the skin that lighter, brighter, slightly tighter uh, appearance. It's not gonna be something that you'd necessarily look in the mirror and go, this looks ridiculously different. It's not gonna change your facial structure, it's not gonna make you look puffy, swollen, tight, or anything along those lines. But what we find is, and Emily would agree, Lots of our patients who've had this before, and certainly from the evidence that we've seen, is that people just feel that their makeup goes on better, their skin just looks a little bit more dewy, their complexion's better. Without makeup, they even look a little bit sort of um, more awake and refreshed. But no one in your close circle will sort of look at you and go, what have you had done? Um, so Redentity One from Tioxone, as I said, uh, can come as either a one syringe, which is three millilitres, and that will cover the whole face, and that's what we're going to be doing for Emily today. Or we get a box with two syringes of one milliliter, and the idea is that a one milliliter syringe would be able to focus on a problematic area, whether that be sort of around the mouth or lower face, or in certain patients that we have on our books, around the eyes area as well. So results hopefully in the next sort of six to eight weeks. Keep your eyes peeled for what the results look like, but also get yourself booked in if you'd like to to get this in place so that by the time that uh, Christmas party season, if it happens in the year of post-COVID, if it actually happens, at least your skin will be ready to go uh, and it's one less thing for you to have to worry about. Anyway, so what I'll do, I'll get set up. Emily's had some numbing cream on so far. Um, you don't have to have it done because the other thing is that the Redensity one does have lidocaine, local anaesthetic, mixed within it, so it does make it more comfortable during the injection process. However, because it's my wife and I would be in trouble if I didn't, I have put numbing cream all over her face and we would do that for you as well if it was your preference at Romdi Medical Practice. So bear with me while I just get cleared up. So part of the process is after we've um, put your numbing cream on is we obviously clean the skin. So I'm just cleaning off the excess uh, numbing solution, numbing cream that has been used uh, on Emily's face. Uh, and then after this initial pre-clean, I'll do a proper sort of uh, medical clean if you like. The product that we use is um, made of sodium hypochlorous, which is actually the same as um, baby sterilizing uh, solution that you get in most uh, pharmacies around the country. Um, but this is made specifically for the skin, so it's actually a very nice, gentle cleanser with no harsh alcohols or drying agents, which obviously lends itself to this treatment. Um, however, what does it smell like, Emily? Swimming pools. It smells a bit like yeah, swimming pools. It's <laughs> <laughs> so numb. Sorry. So it smells like swimming pools <laughs> due to the chlorine concentration within it. So uh, don't be surprised if, uh, when you come in for your treatment, you are whisked away to a summer holiday somewhere, lying by a pool, smelling the beach and the chlorine. Um, unfortunately, we will not be providing you with uh, cocktails, with uh, umbrellas or bits of fruit sticking in them. Join me in just a second and we'll get going with the treatment. Okay, so face is all cleaned up now. Emily is nice and um, nice and relaxed. It's a bit cold in clinic today, so I have to hurry up because otherwise she'll tell me off for being too cold. What I have here now is a three milliliter syringe of Redensity One. Um, it comes in a pack with extra needles so that we can change them as we're going through. And it's now just a case of putting very small micro aliquots, little boluses into the skin. I don't need to massage it in. You will have some little raised blebs or bumps on your skin, little bits of redness afterwards. But stick around and I'll show you what we're going to use at the end of that to take down that little bit of redness and inflammation. Uh, spoiler alert, it is another Tioxane product, so uh, enjoy. Right then, are you happy for me to carry on? Yeah. Okay, nice and relaxed then. A little sharp scratch. I'm not going to say sharp scratch all the way through just because uh, we'll be here forever. And all I'm doing is just very gently coming under the surface of the skin and just putting very small amounts of the product 
underneath the surface of the skin, knowing that it's going to creep and find its own way around in the skin itself. You'll notice that it's not changing volume, it's not causing any structural change, it's not causing any over, uh, swelling, and all that's going to happen is that this product is just going to find its way through and just gently move around the tissues underneath the skin. You can imagine it, if I got you to film the whole thing or got you to watch the whole thing, um, we'd be here for quite a while and that would possibly be the most boring video in the world. Um, however, what I'll do is I'll do a few areas more and then we'll just cut and then I'll show you what it's like coming to the other side and then Emily can give you an honest appraisal of how comfortable this is, isn't it Emily? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she means it, I promise, she does mean it. So what we've done is we've done the lower third of the face a little bit now. Uh, you can see that there's just the little white remnants, uh, little bumps where the product has been placed under the skin. So the little white bumps normally disappear within about two to four hours, but they can remain for up to 24 hours depending on you know, the patient uh, demographic to begin with. What we do say is though, no touching or rubbing to start with, don't want to be risking introducing any infections, but also the product itself does not need to be massaged away, it will just find its own way, it will creep into the areas where it needs to be. So I'm just going to work a little bit more on Emily's cheek while you're a bit closer. So just, as you can see, a little gentle stretch on the skin, very superficial injection, and you can just see that as I pop it in, just causing a little raising, a little white raise. Is that okay, Emily? Mm -hmm. Just working my way around gently. You can see there's nothing really scary about it. There's no real changes to the skin. You don't see big volume changes immediately. You certainly wouldn't uh, suggest that you look, as it says, uh, you know, pillowy or dumb, fake duck, feline, all of these things that we hear bandied around in the industry, which are not necessarily things that we want to be associated with here at Romsey Medical Practice. And obviously what we're hoping to achieve here with Emily and obviously with our patients moving forward, is that we just get that better skin quality, better skin texture, where things just look more hydrated, more plump, brighter and lighter. We do have to be careful when we go into the eye area, and we do use Redensity One in the eye area, but we have to be very selective with the patients that we choose, and also we have to manage your expectations appropriately because in the under eye area you can get a little bit of post-procedure swelling afterwards which can last a little bit longer than anywhere in any of the other areas. A little sharp scratch here. So around the eye is one of those ones that we can do it but it's one of those ones as well that we have to be very selective about who we choose and not everyone is a candidate to have it done in the eye area even though that sometimes can be their main area of concern. It is subject to consultation uh, and at that consultation we can offer potential solutions. The other thing that any of you that know us here at Romsey Medical Practice, Emily and I and our other nurse injector Holly, we're very honest about what we feel we can achieve and what we won't be able to achieve. So if we feel that what you're asking for is something that doesn't sit within our skill set or is a little bit beyond what we can achieve with non-surgical means, we will tell you that and we will actually possibly uh, send you somewhere else or give you recommendations of someone else you can speak to. You can rest assured that will always be something we do for you here. So we finished on Emily's right side now and you can see that you've got these little white blebs, these little white sort of bumps on the skin, um, almost looks like she's had uh, an attack by a swarm of angry mosquitoes, um, <laughs> but actually redness wise is, is, is there, it's present, we have got something that we'll show you afterwards which will take that redness down even more. But what we've done is we've just placed lots of little uh, blebs across the whole of her right side of her face. Uh, with the view that every injection that we place is going to just creep and diffuse so that the whole area is going to be covered. So we've gone right the way from the middle point of her chin, a little bit across the top lip there, all the way down along the cheek for those so-called accordion lines. Can you give me a big smile, Emily? She hasn't really got them, but we can, you can imagine in certain patient uh, populations, we get these lines coming across the cheek. This will help really well for those. Give me a big smile. Uh, we've been a little bit careful not to go too close to the under eye only because there is a risk of uh, a bit more prolonged swelling in the under eye area. Now I'm aware that some people will be wanting this treatment specifically for the under eye area so subject to consultation we may discuss this and it may be one of those things that we uh, can or can't do uh, 
Um, but we'll be very honest with you in our assessment of if, if you're a suitable candidate. But this is more of a whole face procedure as opposed to it being a focal one area procedure, which is why we've used already half of that three milliliter syringe as you can see. So we'll move on now and do the left side of Emily's face. <coughs> So now all we're doing again is just repeating the same process on the left side of Emily's face. I've already done the lower third um, just because it's quite a hard angle to get on camera so I've just got that one through already. But you can see that we can work through all of the problem areas that people complain about, the nasolabial fold, the corners of the mouth, the marionette area, the accordion lines that we mentioned that are the lines that run down the side of the cheek when we smile. Just move your head slightly towards me Emily. As I said, we've got to be careful of the under eye area just because of the risk of swelling. But another thing to take into consideration with this, even though it is a hyaluronic acid based dermal filler, well, sorry, it's not actually a dermal filler, it's a hyaluronic acid based skin booster. So it has the same chemical properties as a dermal filler, other than the fact that in a dermal filler, the product is a gel like structure which will provide volume changes and shape changes and, and you know behave as a, a traditional dermal filler would. In this situation the hyaluronic acid component is what we say uncross-linked. So instead of it being like a gel it's basically just a, a, a thick liquid almost so that when you inject it in under the surface of the skin it starts to melt like honey would at room temperature and therefore what it does is it doesn't add any structural change, any volume change, any shape changes but it will just, as I say, creep its way through the skin. And this creeping can take a, a few days. The swelling can be gone within a couple of hours, but it can take up to 24 hours as well. So unlike traditional dermal fillers, we're not putting in any shape changes. We're literally just trying to create some plumping, lightening, brightening, and tightening of the skin. Uh, so we finished with the actual injectable side of the uh, skin booster treatment now. So three mils of the Redensity one has gone in on both sides of Emily's face. You can see that the first side we did, which is her right side, has already started to settle down already. If we just turn slightly to the side, you can see that that has already started to go down from a redness side of things. But also the left side, which was the second side we treated, is looking still a little bit red. So another little trick that we have as part of our uh, new package would be with some topical skin booster as well, which I'll just show you here. Uh, topical skin booster might not sort of come up on the camera very well, but we'll put a little still in of it. Also made by Tioxane, and it is Brazilian hyaluronic acid, so still hyaluronic acid, which is the main component of the skin booster itself, um, mixed with that restorative complex of amino acids, antioxidants, minerals, and vitamins. And it comes as a a little pack like this with a single use vial of the product with a uh, sterile pipette as well. So I'll just show you how uh, we can apply this and the differences in Emily's skin immediately after using the topical skin booster. So, so as I put the topical skin booster on through this pipette system, you can see that it's actually very thick. It sits where it's placed on the skin. Um, so thick it's actually quite hard to get into the pipette. So it's something that Emily and I have had to learn over time how to use. But what it does is it has a combination of hyaluronic acid, as we said, uh, but also that um, amino acid, antioxidant, and uh, mineral and vitamin complex. And what does it do is as we massage it in, you can see that it, well, you can't see, but what it is doing is creating a little mesh-like network over the top of the surface of the skin, because that skin barrier, through all the multiple injections that have been placed, will have been damaged to a degree. So what we're trying to do now is, is lock everything in, create this little meshwork over the top, which helps to encourage the skin booster treatment that has been injected to work more quickly, but will also improve the outcomes of it. And you can see actually, just as we're sitting there now, uh, Emily, does it feel better now? It's, it's yeah, massive. it feels like it's soothing the skin. Yeah, so that's the other thing as well for our patients. It is a soothing sort of uh, procedure, but you can see it's just taking down some of the redness, some of the inflammation which means then that the downtime is also reduced. We can still see the little bumps underneath the surface of the skin, but what we're not seeing is the same redness and inflammation that was present immediately after we finished her treatment. So this is a little something that we can uh, add to our uh, skin rejuvenation packages, um, just as a sort of an accelerant, if you like, and as a little bit of a luxury at the end. 
Um, and as I said, this is using the RHA topical skin booster from Tioxane.